How's everybody doing? I want to talk to you guys today about picking. <clears throat> I uh, affectionately entitled this video Confessions of a Picking Marxist. Not Nazi. Not like overused. So we'll go with Marxist. Um, when I started teaching guitar lessons, one on one guitar lessons, back in the 90s, I one of the things I was very known for, uh, you know, being very strict about was how you would pick the guitar. Um, <clears throat> I was uh, very stickler for a certain way of holding the pick, a certain way of holding your hand on the guitar, a certain way, just very, and, and I would like, you know, bust students over and over and over and over. No, it's not. Don't hold the pick like that. Stop holding the pick like that. Don't hold the pick like that. Um, and as time went by, I had students sort of like graduate and go on and do other things and would run into students and eventually found people on line and stuff like that that had taken lessons off me and you know how many of my students pick the way I pick zero <laughs> none of them pick the way I pick and they're all good well the ones that stuck with it all went on to be very good guitar players um, many of them do things that I don't know how to do or can't do it happens right you hope that the next generation goes off and does it better than you and I believe that I succeed in that way I don't feel like and at first I thought well maybe I was a failure about the picking thing but it, not so much I thought it was a failure but I felt like whoa I need to rethink this picking thing because obviously there's more than one way more than one right way of picking <clears throat> and as I got uh, as YouTube really kind of exploded and I was able to, you're able to now watch, you know, these videos, people with their hands, zoomed in on their hands, you can see what they're doing. There's people that pick all kinds of different ways, um, you know, so what, but what is the right way, right? You know what I mean? So is there a right way? So let's talk about the different, let's different, talk about some of the different picking techniques that there, there are out there. Um, there is straight up and down, good old fashioned alternate picking. Down, up, down, up, down, or if you want to get fancy, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Um, right? Just. And then it doesn't get any more basic than that. There is sweep picking, right? Which I'm very bad at. There we go. I just wasn't warmed up. So, you know, the, and that is, uh, that's done for, for a specific thing, like playing a, a big arpeggio like that. There is economy picking, which simply means that um, if you are going down, you want the next one. If you're going to the next string, you want the next string to be a downstroke. If you are um, going up, I should, if you are going uh, from the, Skinny strings to the thick strings, from the first string down to the sixth string, say to say, so to speak, or uh, as an example, you would want to um, economy picking would say that. So if you're picking, uh, you see, so you end on an up, you want the next one to be an up too because you're going to the next string. I don't know if that makes any sense. Uh, so for, for instance, this would be. So I would, if I was doing a down on this and I wanted to go to the next string, it would be a down if I was doing it up. So you kind of, um, it's economy picking. So you don't do straight alternate. <clears throat> it depends if you're going to another string, you would continue on with the downstroke or the upstroke, depending on which way you were going. Say it simple. I'm just making it too complicated there. Um, do you use that? Um, yeah. Uh, so so that, that that's another uh, picking approach the other uh, let's talk a little bit more about the actually how you hold the pick uh, real good question do you hold the pick tightly 
do you hold the pick real loose? Does it sort of flop between your fingers? I mean, there's even a company <clears throat> that makes a product for guys that hold the pick real loose uh, that keeps the pick from rotating and dropping the pick. Or do you hold the pick real tight or somewhere in between? There is um, slant picking, which uh, if you want to know more about more in-depth uh, discussion on slant picking, search Troy Grady on YouTube and you will find <laughs> it's like the Cyclopedia Britannica of slant picking. But um, do you, you know, so do you slant pick? And what slant picking means is as you're, as you're going from one string to the next, do you slant the pick? So you're going to kind of create a kind of this thing right here. You're, here's the, say this is the string, and you're going from the next string, you're going to go like this. So you're going to sort of slant the pick this way. If you're going this, if you're going from the high strings to the low strings, you slant the pick the opposite direction. There's up slanting and down slanting. And the, that facilitates getting in and out or between the strings a lot easier. <clears throat> but another way of doing that is edge picking, where you treat the, what you do is instead of coming down flatly with a pick, you come down with the edge of the pick. Hmm. So what is the right way? Wow. Um, do you do you rest the hand on the guitar when you pick, or do you, or are you more free floating? Hmm. What do you, how do you palm mute? How do you tremolo pick? What should you do? The right way. The short answer to all of those questions is yes. You must learn. Oh, and the, one of the picking styles I did mention was Travis picking. You know, that incorporates, you know, there's the times when you incorporate the fingers. I cheat and I, I make no bones about it. I believe that you should pick the way you need to pick for whatever you're doing. And I cheat, sweet child of mine. I play that with, with Travis picking hybrid picking, whatever you like to call it, where I incorporate the fingers along with the pick. So the right way to pick is whatever you need in the moment, which means you should know how, you should know about all these techniques. Um, I feel a little stupid that I messed up that sweep. <laughs> There we are. I just don't do a lot of that. That isn't, war that isn't like part of like how I so play and stuff very much. So in any case, um, you want to learn, you want to start to get under your fingers a lot of different things. You know, there are times when, you know, yes, I rest my hand on the bridge or, on, or somewhere on the strings. I believe that um, – for the most part, that's that's how I generally. If I'm going to pick, if I'm going to do like a solo where I'm going to do a lot of like single note picking and things like that. I kind of get settled in, and I have a sort of pick uh, you know, way I hold the pick. I co I combine slant and edge picking depending on what I need to do, and Travis picking as well. So I've got them all going on. But but there are times when I'm not. I don't rest the uh, pick on the strings because maybe I'm doing some wild strumming stuff like. <laughs> So I went. I'm not, I mean, my hand isn't even on the guitar uh, for that. Um, but when I went in to do that little, like, quicker thing there at the end, I kind of brought myself back to where... I've kind of developed a picking that is comfortable for me. Um, uh, sort of a funny note is one of the things that really kind of like got me like out of my sort of uh, <laughs> very regimented, this is how you must pick thing was watching Marty Friedman. Um, I, I often joke that, you know, if Marty Friedman had been my student, you know, I'd have been like yelling at him all the time about his picking because he picks like this. He holds, he, he uh, brings the hand around the front of the guitar and, and holds the pick like this. Like, I can't even imagine how you would even pick like that. Like, what the hell is that? But he makes it work. So that is the key. Do Can you make it 
can you make it work? And you will find what feels, everybody's body is shaped a little bit different. You know, nothing on our bodies is completely symmetrical. No two people are identical. So it could be the way it's comfortable around his, for his shoulder or whatever. Who knows? Um, there are many styles of picking that incorporate uh, Travis picking or finger or just using the fingers. Both Jeff Beck and um, uh, Mark Knopfler don't even, neither, neither one of them use the pick. Um, Rich, uh, Richie Cotson, Coatson, Cotson doesn't, doesn't, doesn't use the pick. And he still gets that great attack, you know, just using his fingernail. And, and you know, uh, the, the, the side of the thumb and things like that. So there is... You're going to want to play around with different things. I went on a quest um, starting a couple of years ago. And uh, when I realized that I was really struggling with my picking, I was like, you know, my picking is shitty. It's sloppy. And I was relying on a certain pick. That's another thing. You know, what pick do you use? I was relying on a cer certain kind of pick because I was doing edge picking. And if I didn't have that certain pick, and I'll just tell you what it was, it's the regular Jazz 3, uh, or it's the uh, Jazz 3 XL, the thicker one. Not the one, the one I'm playing now is a Jazz 3 XL, but this is the um, one that's made with a sort of fender type pick uh, material. I'm talking about the ones that are made out of the other material, the rougher material that have the beveled edge. And those picks actually are really good for edge picking. You still get a good attack and the notes will pop out real nice if you want to if you want to use something like that. Um, let me see. I have one right here. Um, nylon. It's nylon stubby. But uh, these have a, um, I don't know if you can even see this on the camera, but the edge of this pick, it's a thick pick, and it's beveled, um, where the um, the edges of the pick are, are kind of like offset, the sides of the pick are a little bit offset, there's like a, one of these. So what it does is it allows you, when you do edge picking... <laughs> For the, for the notes to pop out better than on a pick like this that does not have that, although these are both heavies. I prefer heavies. I think that the only thing I'll say about what pick you should use for most, like, guitar lead, quote-unquote lead guitar, you're playing single notes, you're playing solos, things like that, I think most of the time you're using, most guys are using a heavy, to medium to heavy in there. I know in the comments somebody's going to say, oh, so-and-so uses a, a, a thin pick. Well, then that's what they do. But I think most guys are using um, some type of medium to heavy uh, thickness pick. So, um, again, that is a matter of taste, comfort. They will sound different. This nylon sounds different than this pick does right here. They have a little bit of different sound, and I find myself holding my hand a little bit differently depending on what on what pick I use. But I had sat down a couple of years ago and started to get very serious about my picking. I didn't like the way it sounded. I felt like it sounded fuzzy. Like, and what I mean by fuzzy is like the notes weren't really definite. And by just taking some time and working on it, I got a lot better with my picking. Now, how should you work on it? Okay, and I could just say, okay, I'm going to give you exercises. We, you, you know all the exercises. Come on, you guys know that, like, you know, you you put your metronome on, and you you know you do accents like things like that. You know, you do. Um, get the you know going from string to string. You know, you you guys, I don't need to tell you to do. Even just practicing you. Your pentatonic scale is, you know, that's a totally legit, you know, whatever. Um, but how you, the, the, the bigger, the most important thing that you can do, and you should do this, of course, with everything you do, but we're talking about picking taste, really examine what you're doing. When you play something and it comes, sounds out really good, you know, well, wait a minute, what was I just doing there? Was, was I, was I holding the pick a little bit different? Was I doing something for my, uh, different with my hands? Um, was I bringing the, mo was I bringing the motion from the forearm or more from the wrist? Again, the answer is yes. You're going to you will you incorporate the forearm, you incorporate the wrist, you even incorporate finger movements, small finger movements as well. Uh, but I really sat down and I just started to really just 
pay very close attention to what I was doing with the strings. Um, and I just kept on moving that pick around in my hand until I found... I found my um, way of doing it that just works for me most of the time. Also, don't confuse problems that aren't picking... I mean, yeah, because there's some problems that you're having with your technique, I guarantee, that you might think are picking, and they're not necessarily. It's a, a, a big problem that, and I run into this if, with myself as well, is hand synchronization. And it's one thing to get hand synchronization uh, together when you're playing right on the downbeat, you know. You know. That's a very even number of notes. Um, but when you're doing hemiolas, which means when you are playing an odd number of notes, a repeating pattern with odd number of notes, or you're phrasing on the upbeat, hand synchronization can be a real problem. Uh, this isn't a video about hand synchronization, but it can make you think that your picking isn't together when really your picking is fine. It's not the picking, it is the synchronization and you have to work on those, on that, on that type of phrasing. Uh, but anyways, so that's it guys. It's just a matter of, yes, use all of the stuff, use all of the tools. Um, there are guys I know that dro drive themselves crazy because they have to pick every single note. And if they're playing, um, you know, some type of uh, scale pattern or some type of uh, line that they really like, and they're putting a couple of hammer on, they're doing a couple of legato things because, you know, they're getting tripped on the up on the pick. So what? So freaking what? You know, you're that stuff is going by so fast, nobody's hearing it. You know, I mean, if you want to practice that stuff because you're trying to, you know, you're trying to get your picking better, but if you can play some awesome stuff and you incorporate a combination of the different picking styles with your legato or whatever, fine. You know, if you've got a Travis pick something because you just can't quite get that note, you know, but but Steve Vai can get it. Well, he's Steve Vai, all right? Steve Vai practices, you know, a gazillion hours a day. You know, this is this is why this is why my my lessons are called the practical guitarist, okay? Because that's not practical. So the best thing to do, the shortest uh, um, route uh, to get to where you want to go with your picking is to get comfortable with a lot of different ways of picking and use what you pull out of the toolbox, what you need when you need it. Uh, there is some links in the description, uh, lulombardirocks.com. That'll give you access to some, uh, some goodies that I have and some freebies and things like that, as well as keep you up to date about, we have a, a great lesson program for you there with the, the it just focuses on practical stuff on the guitar. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please leave comments. Feel free to reach out to me with any questions. Uh, that's, that's what I'm here for. My name is Lou Lombardi. Again, you want to go to loulombardirocks.com. Guys, it, uh, thanks a lot. Have a great rest of the day.